Brian Smith here, and welcome to the Dream Path Podcast, where I try to get inside the heads of talented creatives from all over the world. My goal is to demystify and humanize the creative process and make it accessible to everyone. Now let's jump in. Jason Moore, welcome to the first 2021 Duocast. I'm so glad to be here, man. Well, today's been a crazy day and so was yesterday. We are talking to each other the day after the Capitol was raided by domestic terrorists and the joint session of Congress was interrupted and brought to a halt by criminals. Yep. And here we are trying to uh, move through this and do what we normally do, which is talk about the last episode and pretend that everything's okay. (laughs) So (laughs) I think it's all we can do. Yeah. I don't want to let events of the world change the way that we do business. I want to be respectful of what's going on in the world and not be tone deaf, but at the same time, you know, we've got a job to do. Absolutely. So before we move into what we normally talk about, Jason, which is last week's episode and what we have coming up next and that type of thing, how are you doing and how are you getting through these turbulent times? I'm doing fine. You know, I, I have been watching the news. I've been keeping up on it, but I really try not to get too, too much into it. I know that the process is going, uh, starting to go a little more smoothly. You know, the president has finally conceded basically, and we're moving forward. We're moving forward with the process and, and it looks like we're going to have a, a new president on the 20th. Yeah. I listened to a video of him today and I didn't hear him concede, but I don't think it really matters at this point No, uh, whether he concedes or not. I mean, the process is doing what it's supposed to do. Congress has counted the votes and the vice president presided over that eventually and and, um, acknowledged that Biden is up to bat, so to speak. So let's hope that we can move through this ugliness and this vile, despicable grotesque chapter of American politics and start a fresh chapter on January 20th. I totally agree with that, Brian. I think we're going to have a nice smooth transition and back to business as usual. Who knows what that is? Yeah. Hopefully that means uh, boring. <laughs> yeah, Like we've talked about before. Yeah. Right. I do not want exciting politics. I don't want divisive politics anymore. I don't want to be political anymore. I don't either. At least not for a while. Let's wait a few years. You know, I, there are so many more important things and so many happy things on the, on the forefront moving forward with both of us and for you, especially Brian, because you became a grandpa. Well, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, <laughs> uh, baby Scarlett, my first granddaughter was born just a couple of hours ago. And so I am waiting, anxiously awaiting to meet her in person. She is going to come home to our house tomorrow because my daughter lives with us. And so therefore our granddaughter will live with us. And so I'm going to be able to meet her in person tomorrow. And I'm really excited and pretty overwhelmed really emotionally with the whole concept of being a granddad and what that's going to mean, how that's going to change my life and change uh, our family's life. And uh, also it's hard not to think about the responsibility that we have to these newer generations of kids that are coming into the world Mm -hmm. and um, how badly we have fucked it up for them. Oh yeah. And what we can do, you know, what, what can we do to make it better? What can we do to repair everything that we have ruined and harmed through just what's happened over the last, not just the last four years, but I think that some terrible things have happened environmentally over the last 20 to 30 years economically, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done to even the odds for folks. I don't know. I I feel a a newfound responsibility to the younger generations now that uh, I have a grandchild in the world. It just makes me look at the world a little differently. I can totally see where you're coming from. It's a a scary time. And yeah, we have a lot to fix. Uh, You know, I've, I've talked about this with my daughters and just almost apologetically said, you know, look, I'm sorry that you're having to sort of live in these times and live with the repercussions of what we did, you know, environmentally and, and, uh, everything else. So it's, (laughs) you know, it's, (laughs) it's exciting, but scary. I bet. I don't know. I'm not a grandfather yet, but, uh, something really kind of special about that. And I I think you guys are going to love it. I already love it. 
and I'm way more excited than I am scared. Good. But that anxiety is lurking there in the back of my mind because it's just an unavoidable feeling when you're living in a time like this of turmoil and uh, upheaval. But I think that we're going to see a turnaround in our country and uh, spiritually and politically. I think there's going to be a renaissance that happens over the next five to 10 years. That's my hope. And I'm going to try to make that happen. I don't know what one individual can do to change the world, but I'm going to do my best to change it in whatever way I can. And I'll be right there with you, man. Right on, brother. So, you know, we're here to talk about last week's episode with Naomi Grossman. Man. So what, what did you think? <laughs> she is so, she is so full of energy. I absolutely love the interview. Um, her personality is, is awesome. You know, it's, it, if you just listen to the audio, she, it sounds like she's bouncing off the walls. She has a, a, a lot of energy and likes to talk. Well, and, and not only does she like to talk, I think she was a little deprived of human contact because of the pandemic. <laughs> I think that was one factor. I think so, yeah. But primarily, I think she has a lot to say about the arts and performing and acting and Hollywood and entertainment. And so, it's not like she just likes to talk. She actually has something really profound to say. And that's what I, I enjoy about people like Naomi, because they have this enthusiasm and they have this charisma that just leaps out of your earphones or out of your speakers. And you're like, wow, okay, this is someone who is excited about life. Oh, yeah. They're excited about what they're doing for a living. And they actually have some advice to give to people that are thinking about going into acting or going into entertainment or writing and producing and all of the things that she does professionally. But she's a really good person. You can just tell that she loves her fans. She wants people to know how hard it is, but she doesn't want to discourage them from getting into the business. And she's just a really fun person too. So she's one of those people, one of those guests that I think if I go down to LA again, ever, the pandemic lets me do that. I definitely want to connect with her in person and do maybe a follow-up interview in person because I miss that face-to-face -face contact with people. And she's the type of personality that you're going to just be attracted to and, and you want to be around that energy. And I definitely want to reconnect with her down the road when it's safe to do that. That would be a great, great interview. Her face-to-face uh, -face would be, that would be something else. I, you know, I loved her character, Pepper. I watched um, American Horror Story up to, I think, uh, I think it was Freak Show. It might have been the one after that, and I've yet to see Apocalypse, but that is something that I've already talked to Odessa about. We're going we're gonna to marathon the whole thing and uh, get to see her other character that she plays in there. Is it uh, Sarah Crow? She's a Satanist? Saman Samantha Crow, the Satanist. Yeah. Samantha Crow. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. I, I think she's a great actress. It's remarkable to see physically the transformation that occurs when she gets that pepper makeup on. I don't think I've ever seen a physical transformation like that without CGI happening. Right. I know. And it must take hours to do that stuff because it's pretty elaborate. The thing I appreciated the most about the interview in terms of what was illuminated was her discussion about Pepper and how that character developed over time. She didn't know where this character was going or what was going to happen. Right. And then when she went to the bathroom, as she says, and never came out, yeah. uh, she didn't know if she was going to be invited back. She had a three episode guarantee and then uh, she was invited back. And when she was, her character really followed this incredible arc where she was given depth and complexity and had a big role in the series and became, as you know, a fan favorite to the point where she was traveling the country, making more money off of uh, Comic-Con appearances than she was from her American Horror Story performances. I think that's great that she's able to do that. And yeah, it's definitely one of the uh, most well-known characters in that series. Absolutely. So Jason, uh, what do we have coming up next? We have an interview with an actress named Rebecca Metz. Yes, yeah. We recorded that in December, and she is another one of these high-energy actresses that has a lot of comedic background. So if you look at her IMDb, you'll see that she's in a lot of sitcoms, and that's because she brings this incredible 
humorous energy to her performances. Oh, she's funny. Yeah, she is. And, and she's smart and really generous with her time and was kind to sit down with me and share her story about how she got into acting. So it's interesting that we started off January 2021 with two actresses with a comedic flair to them. Yeah, and, and she is. She's really funny. I've seen her on a couple of different shows. She's been on Mom. She's been on a whole bunch of different shows. She's pretty funny. She's a solid, solid actress and, and a good person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, another thing we have coming up is Sundance Film Festival is right around the corner. And we are trying to book and have booked several interviews with filmmakers Good. that will be in the can, so to speak, in the next couple of weeks and probably rolling out in February and March. That sounds awesome. I can't wait. Yeah, it's really becoming my favorite time of year, film festival time and especially Sundance, where uh, new filmmakers and actually veteran filmmakers too put out content that is fresh and cutting edge. And sometimes may not make it into the mainstream, may not even be picked up by a distribution company, and you may not even be able to see it ever on any platform. So it's kind of a, a crapshoot for these filmmakers. They don't know if their film's going to be picked up. But I love talking to filmmakers at that stage of their creative process where they put all of this work into a film and they really have no idea how it's going to be received. And sometimes, the film is not even fully formed yet by the time it gets picked to go into Sundance. So they're still kind of cutting it and dealing with sound issues and editing and trying to come up with the perfect ending for the movie. And so by the time it premieres at Sundance, and this will be online, of course, because they've canceled the in-person Sundance Film Festival. But by the time it premieres, it is literally the first time that the actors, the producers, the director, the crew has seen that movie. So they're watching it for the first time, just like everybody else is. And that's a very special dynamic to have in a creative process. And that's why I like being part of it. Uh, really bummed out that I'm not going to be able to be in Park City this year, but I will be talking to filmmakers and hopefully getting those interviews rolling out, just like we did last year, probably mid-March through through the summer, I would imagine. Well, yeah, you had quite a run last year, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and then we have a Cannes Film Festival and South by Southwest and a lot of other opportunities for us to talk to creatives in the film industry. Another thing I'm trying to do this year, Jason, is step outside the box a little bit and talk to folks that are maybe in stand-up comedy or in other creative fields so that we can broaden our horizons a little bit. I, I really got film and music centric last year for a lot of reasons, primarily because that's just where my interest takes me. But I'd, I'd love to talk to more comedians. So keep your ear to the ground for comics, stand-ups, comedic writers, and maybe we can talk to those people in spring. I think that'd be a great addition to the uh, podcast for sure. We haven't done that yet, so... Yeah, we haven't. Uh, I've reached out to a few comedians, but I just haven't had that connection like I have with filmmakers to be able to set those up. And so that's one of my aims for 2021. It sounds good. Looking forward to it. Well, uh, Jason, thanks for joining me on the first duo cast of 2021. Let's ring in the new year with some great interviews and some great content for our listeners. Well, as usual, I'm Always glad to be here, Brian, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with you further in 2021. Right on, brother. Hey, thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, I have a favor to ask. Can you go to wherever you listen to podcasts and leave me a review? Your feedback is what keeps this podcast going. You can also check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook with the handle at DreamPathPod. And as always, go find your dream path. Thank you.